Welcome to the You Name It podcast with Davin Christensen and Jerry Taylor. I'm Jerry Taylor, and that's Davin Christensen. Hola, Jerry! <laughs> that's him. He's the one who yells at the beginning, blows out the whole waveform. Yep. You know, that's his job. His job is to, if I'm trying to do something perfectly, his job is to fuck it all up. Uh-huh. i got to make your life interesting, <laughs> Jerry, because it's not. Thank you. Thank you, my friend, and I'm proud of you. Yep. For everything that you do. Because I'm an adult. <laughs> you are an adult. We have a jam-packed show today for everybody. Jam motherfucking packed. Woohoo! Should I be swearing? I don't know if I should swear that much. <laughs> Mother- well, we hang around people that swear a lot. So <laughs> I yeah, because I realized that it's since off. I started working this construction job, I swear fifty percent more. I know, and like our manners have gone out the window, completely out the window. Burp, absolutely. Fart, whatever. Just don't tell people that. <laughs> don't say that. We had a farting Let's contest. Wait, you have work. to come on. Let them wait for the, <laughs> until the fart segment today. <laughs> so the first segment oh, in our giant little... jam packed. What we'll say it again? What? We've got it all broken down and and planned out. You've been thinking. No, not really. But I did want to get to some stuff because a lot of times we just blather through and we don't get to do exactly what the show is about, which yep. is interacting with the audience. You name it, and we'll address it for you. You can do that in many ways. You can go on Facebook mm-hmm. uh, to the You Name It podcast. You can you can just email us directly to you name it podcast at gmail.com, which should be done all the time by everybody. You know what else should be done? Is they should be looking for emails from that. <laughs> you so might I'll want to check right that now. every once in a while, yeah. That helps. I usually do. Email you and then you don't even look. Well, I usually do. I just realized I hadn't pre-show. Most of the time it's pre-show. There could be some breaking news. Yeah, there isn't. Nope. <laughs> Good. Nothing from anyone. So you guys are really falling off on that. Because for a while there we had... Captain Schultz, we had Adam, we had all kinds of people telling us things that they'd like to complain about. Wait, with Jerry. Us. Yeah. Ah, uh, cracking my Red Bull. There we go. Red Bull. Red Bull gives you wings. I heard that. Yep. I don't know what it means, but I heard it. Somebody made that up. Is there anything that you want to discuss about Red Bull before we go to Chris from Utah? Uh, no. Well, other than the fact that I don't know if all of our listeners have an Aldi in their um neighborhood that they might grocery shop at because aldi has kind of like the off brands yep aldi is a no brand store in fact isn't it all just aldi brand everything is from aldi it's they carry weird brands like clancy's potato chips like never heard oh, okay. of clancy's before they must well, just gotta sell be to aldi you know sounds irish so but they've got you know they've got the stuff that looks like Girl Scout cookies, but it's Bent Benton's cookies. You know, I can tell you this much: it's really they're a really good facsimile of Girl Scout cookies. Yeah, <laughs> you <laughs> get them any time you want. You know, everything they old. do. But you know what they noticed with their peanut butter, which in some parts of the country they're called tagalongs, in other parts they're peanut butter patties. Mm-hmm. But they're the ones with the bit of peanut butter on the top of the cookie. Theirs are chocolate cookies. That's how they get around it, right? Right. They're, they change the ingredients a little bit. So it's exactly the same as a peanut butter patty or tag-along from the Girl Scout cookies, except for the cookie is chocolate. And the fact that you're paying 99 cents for a box instead of 350 or whatever the Girl Scout Scouts uh, spit it out, Davin. The Girl yeah, Scouts come on, charge. professional. I know. I was drinking my Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you this much. I'm a big fan of Girl Scout cookies, but over the years, they started to give you less and less and less of them, mm-hmm. and it's not fun <laughs> because they cost the same, but they it feels just like the boxes have gone to half size, and they've just spaced them out in containers, so they look cool, I guess. Well, I don't know. That's kind of all these way around things, too. The, the container sizes might be a little bit less as far as the weight goes. <laughs> Like their uh, breakfast bars look just like the Kellogg's bre- breakfast bars, but yeah. it's a different name brand and they're a little bit smaller. Right. They're Packaging almost me. looks the same. Um, yeah. But they had a fake Red Bull alternative, so I brought that to work today. 
And oh, had, yeah. Okay, that's what this was about. Yeah. Gotcha. We, um, and let's see. It was called... Can we grab one? I remember. Yeah, you remember. I do. It's called Red Thunder. Red Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a terrible name. I know. So they, the they changed the recipe a little bit. You know, there's uh, there's more of some things and less of others. Like, there's well, there's less calories. There's five less calories in it. Um, yeah. But they boosted up the sodium a little bit. They reduced, you know, they added some more taurine. They threw some more niacin in there. You know, all the, all the healthy stuff. Yeah. Yes, science. Yeah, <laughs> that stuff. But if you get a chance, it's uh, I think it was three dollars and forty thirty nine cents for four of them, instead of paying two fifty a uh, Red Bull. So, so what your topic is is that you're endorsing Aldi. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know what the Red Bull thing? If you're mixing it with vodka, you won't even notice a difference. No, of course not, because you're mixing it with vodka. <laughs> exactly. Anything you mix with vodka, you don't give a shit. I don't know why anybody would buy premium mixers. You don't need it. You need the premium booze and then just use whatever. Exactly. Because it's, you know, science. So, yeah, guys, if there's an Aldi in your area, bring a quarter so you can get a cart. <laughs> they're not uh, They're not a sponsor, by the way. No. but you know, We you, wish. But you you got to slide a quarter that. into the cart to release it from the chains. And then you shop, and then you give them your cart at the end, and they give you another cart that has a quarter in it. So, yeah, swap it out. It's a, They don't have, like, the basket areas out in the parking lot taking up all the parking spots, which I thought that was... That sounds complicated. Yeah, but you, it's like getting a little reward for returning your cart. <laughs> Here's your reward oh, that for doing something we should be doing. That, and they sell you the bags, kind of like California does, which kind of sucks. But if you need bags, you have to... But you can take boxes for free. So bring your own bags to all these. Bring a quarter and bring your own bags, and everybody, yeah, you know, it'll be life as you know as you wanted it. Yep, life will be perfect again. <laughs> and buy all the knockoff shit you can. Yes, and save money. So speaking of food, yes, I believe we had a topic at some point about uh, donuts. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even remember, but Chris from Utah wrote, "Hola, Jerry." <laughs> What's the good word? Oh, Hope much. you and everyone are well. I listened to the last episode and wanted listeners to know that donuts freeze very well. We individually wrap them in saran and they keep for six months. Icing and frosting stay soft as well. So that's that's what we like. We like people to write in and tell us things tell about us what they we're eat talking six about. Six-month-old Krispy Kremes. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe it's great. Yeah, I'll believe Chris from Utah because I think that that's probably a great tip for everybody. But I have I have an addition. Okay, I have an addendum to this information. This is what I heard. So, if it does turn out, mm -hmm. which I'm sure it wouldn't, if it does turn out that they're stale and shitty instead of great after six months, this is what you do. You take your stale donuts, you batter them and fry them like French toast. Ooh. That is great. Everybody should do that. Ooh. So now what you've got from the You Name It podcast is Chris's great advice about wrapping them individually and our addition of if they do fuck up, you can still batter them and fry them like a French toast. And everybody's happy all around. Right? Yep. Making, making it useful again. <laughs> Thanks, Chris, but, from Utah. Yeah, but there's a... There's a real uh, secondary reason for this, too, for this talk. Okay. About audience interaction. It's that you kind of have to watch what you're doing when you do that with us. Because <laughs> we, we love anybody who comments and, and anybody who wants to say anything. We want to do that. But I could, I'll show you a little bit of what happens when somebody <laughs> gets a little carried away. Oh, boy. <laughs> So well, remember Jimmy what our from fans Tennessee. are probably like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know they're probably just like us, probably idiots like us. We'll see. So this is where we start, with Jimmy from Tennessee, uh, otherwise known as Top Shelf. <laughs> Top Shelf. Yeah, 
He is not like on the bottom shelf of the liquor behind the bar. He's way up at the top. This guy's this guy's great. How did so, he get? How did wait? How did how did he get the nickname Top Shelf? I'm not sure he wants me to tell that story. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask Jimmy if it's all right to tell the story about how he got his nickname and then maybe do that next week because it's a big story. Yeah. Suffice it to say, he is top shelf. (laughs) So he was sending in audio clips, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And we start off pretty well. Check this out. This is for for your commentary, Dad, and mine and yours. Okay. It goes like this. Usually I try not to worry about such trivial things, but... uh... It occurred to me today uh, in conversation, um, where is the fine line between being, you know, just regular zealous, like should be good, right? And overzealous or overly zealous. Where is that line of being overzealous from just being plain old, you know, everyday zealous? Hmm. See? Yeah. Good question. Right. The fine Overzealous, line. zealous. You know, uh, what do you think, David? Zealous. Well, could someone be jealous? And then yeah, could, people someone are be, jealous. Oh, could someone be over jealous? I don't know. They don't use it like that. <laughs> excited you know? and overexcited. Well, is it really bad to be overexcited? Yeah, probably. I think a word like zealous, zealous is weird because a lot of times it's given to you in the form of like a person, like a, like a crazy like, even starting with, you're a zealot. You're yeah. a crazy religious zealot, or you're a crazy political zealot. That right. kind of shit. Yeah. So I think zealous is good enough that you don't need the over. I think it starts off at the peak, you know? Yeah. But I guess you could be overexcited. I no, you can't. What am just, I talking about? You just... can't be over anything. It's just what it is. Over. Overachiever. Well, is it good enough to be an achiever, or is it better to be an overachiever? Yeah. I mean, it could be negative. Like, that guy's just too much of an achiever. He's he's an overachiever. Yeah, he's making my head spin. This is like a whole different realm that we're going down, Jimmy. I like it. <laughs> I think my vote on this, and it'd be nice if we had some other people write in to youNameItPodcast at gmail.com. <laughs> and say what they think about it. But I think the word itself is good enough, and you don't have to put an over in there at any point. You should just find another word. Right. Where is Like this. I'll give you an example. That guy is really excited. Right? Yeah. If you want to move it up, then change it to the better word. That guy is zealous about that. Right. I I think if you get overzealous, do you almost kind of tinkle a little in your pants? You think so? I think you might. <laughs> <laughs> like, like over little, anything. Like a little pee-pee comes out or something, you know? It, so if you add over to any of these words, pee comes out. I, I, think, I think it might. Okay. All right. Well, that was overzealous, but let's see what happened, like, I don't know, days after that. Okay. Uh, all of a sudden, I get, apparently because St. Patrick's Day is coming up, we get this. In committed mission of St. Paddy's Day and making my 249 bean Irish stew. I would like to be using one malt bean, but I wouldn't. Because it would be too farty. That's what you get, David. <laughs> Was he drinking? <laughs> one more bean, but it would be too farty. Instead of 239 beans. Get it? Right. right. So, wow. <laughs> he did, and I'll defend him a little bit. He did try that probably three times and sent me every single attempt. Oh, my God. <laughs> but I didn't want to play them all. Well, the weird that thing That was he... actually the best one. Now, he's from Tennessee? It, well, I guess by way of Ire Scotland or <laughs> England Irish or something. <laughs> Having an accent and then doing an impression is hard to hear. <laughs> No, he doesn't have a southern accent, as you could tell from the first one, mm-hmm. because he's from Michigan. He was from my area growing up. Um, he's got a little. That, so we get that. Now that a was a draw. joke. Let's, yeah, let's let's give it uh, a, a little bit of credit here because okay. that was obviously a joke. 
right. that he was doing. But sometimes you get things from Jimmy that are more like this. We're going to do it. Give us any chance, we'll take it. Stupid. Give us any mood, we'll break it. We're going to make our dreams come true. <laughs> do we need always? <laughs> Why is he it's singing the, the Laverne and Shirley theme song? <laughs> I don't know, but there's something about it that reminds me of you. <laughs> the one the one thing about it is that he's not singing the right words at all either. Right. Doing it always. <laughs> Doing it our way. <laughs> that I think that came with no explanation. <laughs> just a, just a random Jerry and David like this. <laughs> just singing into it jimmy i love that shit whatever that was keep make it that coming. happen keep more it <laughs> but he must have decided right afterwards that it was not a good you know that he was maybe on a roll or something because he sent this last one sorry jerry i was just getting carried away with my uh it's pretty cool this digital thing i got on my phone it gives me a wavelength of where I can give my <laughs> a wavelength. To my high end door. Moira, <laughs> Moira, what are you doing over there? Oh, uh, syphilis, syphilis. This should be for you, Dad. Chick, 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 one, chick, syphilis, syphilis. <laughs> is it syphilis or something else? What Symbol- is it? Symbolance. <laughs> what do y'all say in the in the business? Uh, check one, syphilis. <laughs> yeah, it's sibilance is what he's looking for. We need to have him do all of our sound checks. <laughs> <laughs> we do, yeah. Syphilis, syphilis, and then you know my favorite professional sound checking technique is Moira. Moira, check one, <laughs> check two. Moira, the hell. So that's good stuff, guys. Keep it coming. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like Davin at work when he's singing these songs, his version would be take <laughs> it. Stupid. Thanks, Jimmy. That stuff's great. Zealous or overzealous. 239 bean Irish stew, Laverne and Shirley, and a pseudo apology syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like the perfect listener. <laughs> Do you have the one that you played for me at work? That you, was those. No, the one. Wasn't there a listener that played that sent you something else about what you need to tell the the critics or something like that? Well, that was that was a different Jimmy one. I didn't get that one. Okay. Yeah, it was... Uh, We've got more than one Jimmy listening. Wow. Yeah. So, whole a different thing, too. But, you know, that's the kind of show we have here. It's the kind of show where you can have, you can just, you know, send <laughs> shit in and we'll play it, too. <laughs> and comment on it. That's right. This is straight facts for you, Zach. <laughs> that's right. Straight facts for you guys, everybody. Um, we have some serious stuff, too. Okay. Thanks to the listeners. I think that's the only other one I have right there. Um, I noticed that J.P. Morgan, that's J.P. Morgan Chase, right? Yes. They decided to start doing commission-free trading. Yeah. So all those people that love Robin Hood, the app that allows you to trade stocks. Right. Like the big guys, but don't pay any commissions to any of the... Um, brokerages that used to just rape everybody for commission fees that now you find out they didn't need to be doing. Looks like the big guy decided to start their own commission-free trading. Don't you think that's weird? That's because they're losing out on all this money. Yeah. Like, imagine how much business Robin Hood is doing, and, and J.P. Morgan Chase is, like, staring at that going, holy shit, we better do something. <laughs> exactly. I love it when things happen like that, where, where you find out how it could have been done for 50 years instead of them just hands in your pockets all the time. Now they're all there sweating. They're like, oh, fuck, now what do I do? <laughs> yeah. 
because that's what's happening all of the time with businesses. Every single business is there to make money, not to be your friend. Yeah, <laughs> not. I'm not, not a, to be really nice to you. I'm not you a know? trader anymore. I'm a cold caller. I just need to get more people. <laughs> yeah. Will you sign up for my app? Free well, trades, we've got free great. Uh, we've had the the over and over example of the best example of what corporations think of you mm -hmm. is airlines, right? Yep. You're nothing to them but space and not enough of it. <laughs> you know. Yep. That and they um, smash those planes down like crazy, right? Yep. Well, it's like um, one of my show notes. Fuck AT and T TV. Yeah, but hang on. I'm on the airline, and we'll go right to that. Okay. okay. Let me I'm... finish the airline because there's an actual thing that happened. Okay. I guess um, Wendy Williams was on an airplane. Okay. And there was a video uh, of some guy tapping on the back of her seat, like to annoy her, right? Because she reclined her seat. Right. Well, she annoys people every day on her show, so why not? Yeah. Turn about is fair play. Well, the thing is that the whole article was about how the other guy, the seat tapper, was right. He's saying this person who wrote this article, and I don't really care to, I'm not going to link it or anything just because I don't agree with it at all. <laughs> so, it's one of those, like, flight forum things, you mm -hmm. know. It wasn't the points guy or anybody like that, but it was, it was uh, on one of the big travel things that showed up. So the guy's trying to make this argument that the people who are sitting behind you, they could be tall people. They could be big people, and reclining your seat is invading their space. Now, we've, we're, we went over this before. What was your opinion on this? Well, I never recline my, my seat, but if someone reclines your seat in front of you, you can recline yours. Yep. You still have right. space. Yeah. You can do that, unless it was this example where they were in that last row that doesn't recline. Oh, then you're fucked. Yeah, but here the whole thing is about whose rights are there. It, do you have the right to push the button that's purposely built into your seat to recline, or do you have the right to tell people they can't recline their seat that's in front of you? This shit never made any sense to me, that you would think that you could tell the person whose seat is designed to recline right. not to do it. Yeah, they and I'll tell you, don't be mad at the seat reclining people. Be mad at, guess who? The airline. That's where it's all going to. The only person who should be called out for doing anything in terms of seat reclining is the fucking airline that removed all the room from their planes. Not the people who are complaining. Not tall people or fat people or short people or thin people. It's fucking airline. Build a plane that people can fit in. <laughs> So stupid. Or if they want to cancel culture it, they can just get rid of the button that recline seats and everyone has to get sit in perfect posture with their knees against the other person's seat. Right. Message to the airlines. Fuck you and your eyebrows. That's what they need to do. <laughs> Fucking airlines. I'm telling you. It's horrible. See, I'm... I can't figure out how to make enough room in my plane for someone to sit in. See, I'm I'm pissed at AT and T. Yeah, um, it used to be Direct TV when I first got it. Direct TV now, then AT and T bought them out. And... Oh, okay. So you were a Direct TV customer, which was taken over by the giant mammoth AT and T Corporation. Right, and this was probably three years ago. I signed up for it because I was on the road. I can watch my local channels, and it gives you a DVR, and it's up to. Uh, three TVs I think I have, I can have it on. So I streamed yeah. it in the garage. I got rid of my cable and just got that. And when I first signed up, they had the promotion where it was $35 a month. Um, and if you paid three months in advance, they gave you a free Apple TV. That's the device. The yeah, device. I don't have that, but that's the device that runs. And it was a 4K. basically like the Apple Chromecast or yeah, whatever. Yeah, and it was TV. the 4K, so it matched my TV in the garage. Um, yeah. The upgrade. Now they're probably up to 8K now, but who knows. Um, but ever since then, they gradually raised the rates. As they tend to do. Yes, and then they gradually take away certain channels. 
and then they give you stupider chips. Oh, hold on. I didn't know that part. They raise the rates and reduce the service. Well, this one's the same service now, this latest one, but they raise yeah. the rates again. But in the past, they have, oh, well, you know, our our programming has changed. So now, you will you know, if you want the History Channel, uh, you're going to have to get it in this higher price package, you know, that type of thing. Right. Um, so they... It went up from 35 to 45, I think. And then it went up to 60. Now they want 69.99. Yeah, well, sure. So they're getting and in the in next the range. year they'll want 75. Yeah, they're getting in the range of what cable TV was. And when you look at all the other apps out there, streaming apps, they are the highest priced one now. So you know all yeah. the other guys are going to follow. So your yeah, YouTube so your TV. Your theory is that we used to provide you uh, cable TV or direct TV satellite. We used to provide you all of this this thing. Right. We used to be able to rape you for a hundred and fifty bucks a month for this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, then people started changing and had different options. Right. Well, God damn it, we're still going to try and get you back up there to that to yeah. that monthly fee. And basically, their email is well, you know, the cost of providing these channels to you has raised with our vendors and suppliers. So we're passing it on to you, but you're a valued customer. No, you don't think we're, we're, we're just a, a fucking niche in your belt, a subscriber that's going to drop yeah. it. So stupid. So they think that the whole valued customer remark is going to go somewhere. Like you're going to read that increase letter and go, but they like I me. You realize I'm valued. This is okay with me. Yeah. I do realize that in a matter of three years, you've doubled my bill. <laughs> yeah. And reduced the amount okay. of channels. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Fuck them. Corporation. Fuck them. Yeah. There's way, other, way more options out there mm -hmm. for everybody. You don't need AT&T now or whatever. The yeah. Hell and I'm going to start shopping around my my homeowner's insurance and my car insurance too because they just dick you around whenever they can. That's right. Don't piss down my back and tell me it's raining, Davin. <laughs> yep. Because <laughs> I can smell it. <laughs> Who made that shit up? Who made that phrase up? I don't know. It's built with two things nobody wants. It's not like there's a one of the parts that somebody <laughs> wants. They're using both rain and piss. No one wants either one of those things. No. Both are bad. Who made that up? But if you do get pissed on, you would like it to rain to help wash it off. Yeah, it should be like, don't piss down my back on a sunny day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I interrupted you for that, but it had to be said. <laughs> yep. I just don't get shit sometimes. Like, piss down my back and tell me it's raining. What did Whatever. I say today that you corrected me on it? I started laughing about it. Yes, Davin. <laughs> Because you were saying that the pigeon at work was flying with a stick in his mouth. And I said, mm, beak? And you went, yeah, Davin, birds don't have mouths. <laughs> they, don't have li they don't even have lips. <laughs> Update for all of you who know that we have work friends that are birds named Larry and Red and Malachis. And uh, we had a new friend named Shecky show up. Yep. A bunch of pigeons. We are no longer allowed to feed the birds. Yeah, we got in trouble. Yep. Some somebody somewhere up top decided that uh, it's for some whatever reason we're not allowed to feed birds anymore outside. Well, you know what it and is. I know what you'll say. You'll say just go to the area where you can, public property, but it doesn't matter because you'll still be in trouble if they see you on the HD cameras feeding birds. <coughs> even if it's out in the street probably. And how would you like to be our HR person getting that phone call? Well, I know. We can't Sorry, send the you... guys have been let go from the work site. <laughs> For feeding birds. <laughs> For feeding birds. <laughs> oh, that's so stupid. You had a decent paying job, and now you don't because you were feeding birds. Yeah, and the bird feeding was one of the things that was getting us through our new existence in jobs that we never did before or really want to be doing this is our pandemic jobs that the company's helping us with but to ease some of that mental torture 
we would feed some birds and it was fun. We now did. imagine this. <laughs> birds staring at you. Where's my food, birds? Exactly. All over the place. Walking right up to you. Like Bravey. Basically sitting on your shoe staring at you like, where's my food? Yep. Bravey comes right up to you, looks at you, and just gives you that look of disappointment. Yeah. As Larry's only a bird worst. can. Larry just Larry's a, a gray pigeon. He just walks right up to you, tilts his head, and stares at you. Like inches away from your feet. Kind of like, like the kind of like the homeless guy that comes over and like stands next to you wanting a cigarette. <laughs> yeah, somebody pulled a little trick on one of our coworkers. <laughs> so someone I don't know who it might have been. Right. Gavin, maybe. <laughs> no. <laughs> we got the announcement. Our uh leader our fearless leader had the announcement that we couldn't feed the birds anymore. So Davin uh, had an idea. He he told the leader to text the coworker who kept giving away smokes to the homeless to say that he wasn't allowed to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a thing. Yep, we now we don't want birds or bums. Around. We don't want birds or bums hanging around our building. So stop it. <laughs> right now, the the coworker believes that the that the whole building management that we work in is is telling him he can't give smokes to, to the homeless outside. Well, part of it, too, is these guys got all new security cameras. They got the 4K color security cameras that all got installed a couple weeks ago. And, yeah. you know, with COVID, they're not, the building is not really occupied with as many construction workers that was, were there at the beginning because we're getting down right. to the end. So there's really only one more floor left to do, and crews have been packing up and leaving, so they don't have as much to watch. So now they're picking on uh, us. Yep. Now they're like, yeah, who's left? Hey. Look at that guy's shoes. You know, why is he feeding the fucking birds? <laughs> Those guys got to stop it. Those birds are too damn happy out there. <laughs> I'm going to run a business with happy birds. <laughs> Oh God! And by the way, Davin. Yes. Those uh, those people that were getting the cigarettes are aren't really homeless. They're actually nomads. Nomads. Oh, because they travel. Yeah, from one corner to another corner, regardless. Because there's that movie out now about that woman who decides that she's just going to drive around in a in what looks to be a work van mm -hmm. and go camping with a bunch of other people who do that, and the called Nomad Land. Okay. Are they minimalist, yeah. too? No. Uh, I think the word you're looking for is bum. <laughs> They're bums. <laughs> no, I'm a minimalist. No. I'm a nomad. <laughs> no, you're not. You're a bum. You just travel. <laughs> you're a traveling bum. <laughs> oh, man. Now, that's but if you were a traveling bum who rode on trains, you would be a hobo. Yes, you'd be celebrated with songs about you and things like that. But if you're just kind of, you know, broke and driving around and camping outside with other broke people, you're a bum. <laughs> All right. That's like my Someone's friend. Someone's going to get mad at that. Well, my, fr my friend was babysitting her niece, and her niece was like two or three years old, and there were some storms coming through, and it came up on the TV, intense storms take cover for the next hour, you know, tornadoes possible, that type of thing. Yeah. And she went to the little girl, and she goes, you know what that means? She was thinking, you know, we can go camp out and hang out in the basement, you know? Yeah. She goes, you know what that means, right? Intense storms? It's intense. That's where hobos live. <laughs> That's where hobos <laughs> live. There's no such thing as a hobo. They're all around us, Jerry. Some of them are nomads, yeah. and some of them are just plain bums. I know, and it's uh, really is a joke. Calling someone a bum. That's what they would have been called in the 40s. Mm -hmm. I know that these people are not bums. They're nomads. Like, the whole nomad thing is a thing. And there's some there's some value behind it. And, you know, just to make sure that it's clear, just like when people decide that they want to live in a little house instead of a big house, and they make those tiny ones, I, I agree. If you cut down on all your bills, if you want to live in a little house, that's great. Just like if you want to live in a van, you can do that if you want to save some cash. Is it, so no, you're not a bum. Well, is it? But it is fun to say. Is it poor grammar if a bum comes up to you and asks you to bum a cigarette? Wouldn't, yeah, shouldn't he say something like, like can, can I, I have me a, a cigarette? Can I have a cigarette? Yeah. 
I don't think I've ever heard a bum ask if he could bum a smoke. Maybe I have. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I, I don't really know how you define bum. Yeah, Jimmy Is might Is the have. definition, did that come from asking for something? I don't know. Is the bum part the act of, can I bum a smoke? Can I bum a sandwich from you? Or is that come from wherever bum came from? I don't know. Can I bum a lighter? Let's see. Etymology of bum. Now we have to look it up. Etymology. Oh, wait a minute. I can do this. You ready? Yes. Alexa. <laughs> no. Of bum. I'm getting there. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh. All right, here we go. Origin and meaning, uh, meaning of bum by online etymology. This should be good, Davin. Yes. Uh, number one isn't the same thing. They're talking about buttocks, like your bum. Number two, uh, dissolute loafer, tramp. 1864, American English from bummer, a loafer, bum. or an idle person, which is probably from German. Bum first appears in a German-American context as bummer was popular during the Civil War and the slang of the North's Army, which had as many as 216 German. Blah, 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 blah. There may have been influence merging with bum, buttocks, which was applied insultingly to persons from 1530s, blah, 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 bum rush, forcible region. No, so there's no real thing here. I'm not telling you anything. I'm just saying a bum is a bum, and the word was made up a long time ago. Uh. Well, Jerry, you have the best response when a bum asks you for a cigarette. No, thank yeah. you. I'm all set. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm good. It just throws them off. Thanks, but no thanks. I appreciate it, though. Yep. <laughs> Dumb. All right, enough about bums, because we're going to get in trouble for that. We should lighten the mood, shouldn't we? Yes, let's do that. I would like to play for you something that I created. It appears that a couple <coughs> of the people I work with really enjoy sending me videotapes of them farting. <laughs> And this is what it sounds like. That was a, just a sampling <laughs> of oh what I get in my text messages throughout any given day. Oh, I get Wanna random it again? people. Yeah. These are a mixture of you and Josh. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> There's like seven different fart videos that I pushed together. They all together. have different sounds. They're perfect. <laughs> That's what happens oh, at work. Yep. No, my da- now let's my daughter. wait for the HR lady to call. <laughs> my daughter actually <laughs> pulled me aside this week and said she was genuinely concerned as my daughter about my flatulence. <laughs> yeah, she should be. <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's see. What time is it? Moving the microphone. Oh, it's actually just about time, Davin. Yeah, we're blowing through this one. Get let me it? see if I have anything I can breeze through quickly. Breathe. Oh, I do. Better get this out of the way, otherwise it'll sit out here for too long. Do you remember that Capitol riot thing that happened? Yes. Yes, that did happen. Um, and people got inside, and one of the people that got in there was that weird-looking guy wearing the animal skins and the horns and all that stuff. Right. The QAnon shaman is what he was calling himself. Okay. Well, can you wait, 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 wait. Let's backpedal a second. Okay. You can't give yourself a nickname and you can't give yourself a title, or can you? I think you can no. give yourself a title. No, you're right about that. You can't. But someone you else has make to up nickname your own thing. you. I don't know if that's a nickname, though. I think he's claiming to be. I mean, you could. Tell people that you have a title. Like, right. I can tell somebody I'm a lord in uh, Ireland because you made me one, Davin. Yes. I mean, officially. You'll have to go back and listen to a different episode for that, but I'm officially a lord. Lord of Carey. I'm also Lord Jerry a, Taylor of Kerry. Yes, Lord Lord Gerald Scott Taylor of Kerry. I'm also a uh, ordained minister. Yep. So I could tell someone that I have these titles. 
So I don't know how you get an official title of shaman. <laughs> right. No idea. You can Do get, you go to shaman school? What? You can get a, evidently you can get a certificate for distracted driving. We and found that out this week. Do. Yep. Well, that's a whole different topic. I know, but I'm, can, all these certifications out there that are achievable. Yeah, they're right within the... Right it within your grasp. So however he got to become a QAnon shaman, mm-hmm. you guys go ahead and look up QAnon yourself. That's a whole different ball of wax. Mm-hmm. But uh, but he's the guy who is uh, wearing all that crazy. He look, sort of looked like, an, like a, an old Ted Nugent album cover, you know? Yeah, or someone out of Mad Max. Yeah, something like that. So put that picture in your mind. You know what's happened since then? He's been in jail. Uh-huh. And uh, his lawyer has been talking to the press. He, yeah. In fact, he just, the QAnon shaman himself just did an interview last week, but it really doesn't have anything to do with that. The thing is that he's in jail, and he was complaining because he didn't want the kind of food they were feeding him. Yeah. That he was getting a stomach ache. Well, that's because, from getting his ass pounded. <laughs> because he needed it. Could be. <laughs> because he... He needed organic food um, or something. I don't know what the fuck it was. But thanks to uh, T.C. Cleland, that's another person online from Facebook. I don't know if he's a listener or not, but thanks, T.C., if you are. Um, I don't get it because if he's dressed like that, you'd expect him to be able to, like, just kill a rat and chew its head off. Right. Right? Yeah. You know, dressed like the great hunter the Mad Max hunter and then complain because the food isn't organic enough for you. Wow. This food has too much sugar in it. (laughs) I don't know. Upon reflection, maybe he is right because all he eats is food that he kills himself. Maybe. Maybe he is the big hunter and I'm completely wrong, but I sort of doubt it. I think he's a crybaby. We should send him a Red Bull. (laughs) We should send him a Red Thunder. Red Thunder. Aldi. That's more <laughs> like it. Um, Alan, you are the worst sheep ever! Just want to make sure Alan knew he was the worst sheep ever. <laughs> <laughs> just because the thing's working again. That's all. How'd you have to fix it? I Magic. I guess it was just magic. Okay. <laughs> Not much I can say about it that wouldn't bore the tears out of it, uh, the whole audience, but it was magic. sort of magical. <laughs> And I don't have the clips that you wanted. Oh, that's That's why joke is. That's what joke is. Anyway, I think we're done with this show. I think we covered all kinds of stuff. We really need more stuff from people. Jimmy keeps sending in your ideas. Thanks, Chris, from Utah. Next show, we have a report from uh, our correspondent, Mark, from the Athens Messenger newspaper in Ohio. We also have a septic service uh, idea or story. We do. Yep. We have a, a topic about the Porta John people. Yep. And uh, some stuff about your teeth. And uh, I don't know. We can still do some Mandela effect stuff that we were supposed to do if we run out of stuff. But remember, that's if we run low. We right. have a jam packed show now. So we don't need that. And we don't even know if we're still living in the same reality as we were last week. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Maybe oh. the, by the end of the week, next week, we won't be in the same reality. I missed some stuff, too. Because we also have some stuff about a Thai, Thai food place called Thai O'Shea. Oh, yeah. That's a Thai food place named after with an Irish Something ending. happened there. <laughs> We did something a, happened we did a, there. Something happened the day famous, after there. <laughs> we did a famous Coney challenge. Yes. That we could talk about. That's a good teaser. Yep. If anybody knows the famous Detroit Lafayette and American Coney Island feud and which one's better right next door to each other, then you can find out next yep. week. And here's a and tip also, from the United, the You Name It podcast. Yeah. If you shit yourself at work. People, they, they won't even ask. They'll let you leave. They will let we you already, leave. We already did that one. I, I know. Think. It's some advice, though. <laughs> advice? Shit I think yourself we posed it work. differently. <laughs> I think we said it last time. 
if you shit your pants at work, go home. Mm -hmm. Don't finish out the day because you're like, I'm a valuable employee and I have standards and ethics and morals. No, you don't. You have shit in your pants. Go home. Not that that has ever happened to either one of us. (laughs) Within the last 20 years. (laughs) Yeah, that's a good parting note there, David. (laughs) If you shit your pants at work, go home. (laughs) I learned a lot on you, name it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and birds don't have lips <laughs> yeah <laughs> alright thanks everybody we'll talk to you next week Papa Wheel, you guys <laughs>